In this video, successful dropshippers are going to reveal some of their biggest dropshipping fails. If you've ever felt like you were taking two steps forward and one step back, you're not alone. It might be hard to believe that successful dropshippers fail when all you see on Instagram are expensive cars, mansions, and trips to Thailand. But don't be fooled. All successful dropshippers have made huge mistakes along the way. What distinguishes them from the rest of the dropshippers out there is their perseverance. They make mistakes, learn, and jump back in. Ready to hear from the pros? Watch on. Today you'll hear some six-figure dropshippers talk about their biggest dropshipping fails and what they learned. Before I pass it over to them though, let's make sure we're on the same page about dropshipping. Dropshipping is one of the easiest ways to start an online business. Instead of buying tons of inventory for your online store, you only order products when you get sales. Your supplier ships your orders for you so you can sell all over the world. But being a successful dropshipper requires constant learning. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you never miss our tutorials, dropshipper interviews, and product recommendations. Okay, story time. Let's hear from the dropshippers. I think our biggest dropshipping fail was not ordering test products before we sold something. We didn't do it often, but the few times we've done it, it didn't work out well for us. <laughs> Biggest dropshipping fail is trying to sell products that I like compared to products that people want. Um, that's going to be the biggest fail that I made because it's going to prevent you from making sales. Um, even though you like the products that you're offering, people might not resonate with it. And what's most important to get sales is to offer products that people want. I would choose products that I liked and that didn't work well. So I transitioned to selling products that people want instead. Our biggest dropshipping fail was flying blindly for the first six months of the business and not knowing how much money we were making and just like roughly calculating our profit in our minds and just being like, we think we're making money. And then we look in our bank accounts and we're like, what? Where, Where is, is that it? money? <laughs> and we were just like spending so much on ads and really like trying to like spend our way out of the problem until we basically like could not afford to go on and we were like i remember like in the park just like sitting there and saying like any sane person would quit right now because we're like hustling 24 7. we think we're making money but we're not like we don't know what to do we were like trying the best that we can to manually figure out our expenses and profit but it wasn't making sense and we were literally just like trying the same things over and over and over again and nothing was working until we really like started figuring out our numbers properly. We got a really good app that helped us and we started trying different strategies and we made it work with like, you know, our backs pinned against the wall. We were like, we love our lifestyle. We love, you know, working from our laptop anywhere and working together. Um, and we just like made it happen. So. I wish this was a fail that we learned a lot quicker because it was a very slow, <laughs> painful, very fail long six months of like confusion. Yeah, but then it all just kind of clicked at once. We saw where we were just bleeding money from, and we saw like massive opportunity, which was the best part because you realize, oh, I'm doing something wrong. So that means there is a chance to change, and there's a way to make things right. Totally. And like, honestly, I feel looking back so grateful that we failed while we were like flying blindly, because if we had scaled like that, it would have been the worst thing that happened because scaling only amplifies what already is. And we are already like going down. <laughs> so we would have just like dug ourselves into a lot of debt. So like, thank God that it happened when it did, because once we like really figured everything out, we were able to scale massively and profitably, which is like the most important thing. Like they're scaling and there's profit and profit's number one. So profit first, profit first. That's right. The biggest dropshipping fail was actually my first three stores, I believe. So when I started with dropshipping, I actually believed that I invented dropshipping. I didn't do overload dropshipping back then. I had a private labeling supplier in Germany. And I thought, okay, they can offer me the product and I only have to do the marketing. And then unfortunately they tricked me. And after a certain amount of sales, they asked for purchasing products in bulk. And 
I never saw any of the products, so I lost quite some money. Uh, so yeah, I had to learn it the hard way. I continued because I knew the dropshipping model works. It was only the supplier who tricked me, which didn't work. So I only had to figure out a great supplier and then everything would work again. The funny thing was that it was a German supplier and not an AliExpress supplier. And actually I had a very good experience with AliExpress suppliers. So my biggest dropshipping fail is probably my first store that I ever got up and running. It was a very niche store. It was selling nail products, really small nail products, um, completely pink website. And it just didn't have, I was really boxed in with the products that I could sell. So I spent kind of like $800 on adverts. I only got one sale, but it validated that Shopify works and the whole dropshipping system works. However, I couldn't test other products that I was seeing to see them as, as, deem as winning products. So that was kind of my first store. Uh, I shut that one down, started up a general store, and then started to get my initial kind of sales through that. So what I learned from that is if I was just getting up and running with things, you know, I'd always go down the route of a general store so that I'm not limited the pro to the products that I can test rather than being boxed into a niche store and only selling a certain kind of product. And then once I kind of found my winning products on a general store, I was then able to get better and better at finding those kind of products and scaling them further. Yeah, so this was actually in the summer of 2017. My biggest dropshipping fail was just spending a lot of money on Facebook and not realizing that I was losing money every single day. I just wasn't looking at the data correctly. Some of the key points you need to look at in Facebook is number one, your cost per purchase. If your cost per purchase is way over the amount you're selling the product for, you're obviously losing money. So you need to make sure that your cost per purchase is under that and you're adding in obviously the cost of goods to that as well. Um, so that's what I wasn't keeping track of. I was very, very emotionally attached to this product. Uh, that summer it was these new snorkel masks that came around they're like full face snorkel masks that i just started seeing everywhere when i was traveling and so i was like these are good products to sell but back then i also wasn't using my marketing strategy of creating videos so i was only using the basic photo that aliexpress had which i'm sure other drop shippers were using too ultimately i was just losing at this game and i had spent probably about five grand over three months thinking that i was making money but I wasn't and I didn't think I was making money I knew I was losing money I just was very very hopeful that one day these ad sets would pick up and they never did and so I should have learned from my mistake early on killed the ad sets and just moved on to a new product uh, but I didn't and because of that I lost quite a bit of money so don't do that <laughs> so the lesson and the moral of that story is don't be emotionally attached to any product I know there's a lot of products out there and I even have this now where I'm like oh my god like this thing is going to sell like crazy and I'll launch ads and it doesn't and like you just got to be okay with that and know that that's part of this game you know drop shipping I like to think of it as a game so it's just part of the game the product doesn't work it's okay move on to the next one and stop wasting your money trying to get this thing to work now I want to hear from you have you made any of these same mistakes what was your biggest drop shipping fail and how did you learn from it leave a comment and let me know I'll chime in with my thoughts Thanks for watching, and until next time, learn often, market better, and sell more.